I'm going to start off today by showing you a couple of the light-up cards that I've made. They have been so much fun to make and give away. People tend to be rather wowed by them. I'm going to share with you some of the products that I use, the things that I've learned to do and to not to do over time. But let's get started off. This first card here. It's fabulous. I really loved the process of making it and thought that I knew what I was doing on it. Well, I had a lot of problems with it. It was too many layers. I ended up having to strip layers out of the back of it. The lights wouldn't work reliably because there was too much paper that I was having to push to go through. In fact, if you look at this closely, you can see how this is rather indented. Um, I don't know that I would use an embossing folder to texture the paper to start off with. Um, there are just flat out too many layers that went into this card and by the time I finished it was extremely frustrating. However, this card, fast, easy, and it works beautifully. No problems with it at all. When I first started making the light-up cards. I was using the Chibi lights, the Chibi Tronics. However, they are very expensive. They are super easy to use. You can readily tell which is positive and negative on it. The little lights are self-adhesive. You put them down on the um, copper tape circuit that you've made and they work. There's just no question about it. However, the lights also cost right at a dollar a piece and if you're wanting to use more than one light on a card that gets pretty darned expensive. What I found and it works well, not quite as easily, are these lights that I got from Amazon. They're classified as SMD, surface mount devices, I believe it is. And each of these little white and yellow things that you can see in here is a light. I got a string of them for um, $7.13, a hundred of them. So that makes them about seven cents a piece. They are a little bit trickier to handle, but they do work beautifully. To get at the lights, you actually have to cut them out of this plastic case, and you're only left with this white and yellow on it. These particular ones are 5 millimeter lights. I know that they're available even smaller than that, 3 millimeter, some rectangular ones. However, I am just not... My manual dexterity is not enough anymore to be able to manage anything smaller than this, so this is what I have stuck with. Another aspect of these cards is the batteries. If you just go to your local hardware store, electronic store, whatever, you buy them and they cost 4 or $5 a piece. Well, I'll pay that amount for the battery that I put in my car key fob. However, for a card that is probably going to be thrown out not too terribly long, that's more than what I want to pay. I bought these through Amazon. There was a package of 10 of them that cost $5.65. Yes, it says Panasonic on it. I'm kind of skeptical if they truly are Panasonic or a knockoff of some sort. I wouldn't use them in my car key fob, but for the um, light-up card, they are more than adequate. Um, another thing that I use is this quarter-inch copper foil tape. This is something that I had left over from years ago when I was doing leaded glass work. It's wider than what you need. I just cut it in half and end up with two eighth inch strips out of it. You also need something to punch a hole with. I typically use my 
screw punch to do it, um, can use a long arm punch, any sort of a punch that's going to reach far enough into the card to punch the holes that you need. I also use my uh, dies and my big shot machine to punch holes in the foam that I need to do. And speaking of foam, I've seen ones that are done with um, layers of the 3M foam tape. I prefer using a solid sheet of craft foam. That just gives full support over the whole thing. You don't have any bleed through of the lights that goes around the area. Um, and there are little tricks to dealing with that. Another highly sophisticated thing that I use to attach the lights is uh, packing tape. And let's see. Oh, okay, now to get to the adhesives that I've used. Um, I tried using my tape gun to tape the cardstock and the foam together. It does not work. It does not secure tight enough. It just, anyway. So forget about your tape gun. I have used score tape, which is, um, you can find it different names. I think Stampin' Up! calls it Terran tape. There are some other names, but it's score tape. It comes in various widths. That worked well. The red line tape also works very well too. It's a little bit harder to deal with, but you can manage that. Um, another thing that I've used is craft foam. That sticks really, really well. It is so runny though, um, I prefer not to deal with it. The Easiest tape for me to use on these is an old Stampin' Up! product called Fast Fuse. It's no longer available from Stampin' Up! But uh, you can get um, a very comparable one from Tombow. It's called Extra or Extreme Adhesive. Works the same way. Very good. And I also use my line co adhesive that I use for most of my paper products. It takes a little while to dry, so I use a combination of the line co and the fast fuse. The Ranger Multimedium works um, as well as the line co. I can't really tell a lot of difference between them. And you'll see how I use these as we go into it. When I first started doing these, I wasn't crazy about the um, white core of the foam or uh, like on this one it was the black and that worked out fine. But I thought that I would use a marker to color the edge of the foam. Tried a couple of different things. These were just kind of your regular water-soluble dye-based markers and don't use them. Uh, at least that's uh, certainly not the way that I would ever do it again because what happens is I've got a piece of paper to show you. This has been on here for two days now and it does not seem to dry on it. The alcohol marker is better but it still runs off. Um, my solution was to inset the foam slightly from the card face so that I didn't have to see the white foam on it or use the black foam if I wanted a dark one. So I would not mess around with trying to color the edge of that. And let's see what else I need to cover on here. Um, I, oh, to cut the uh, foam. I use a metal straight, straight edge and an X-Acto knife and it takes several slices through it but it does cut it very well. And to cut the holes in the foam for the spots that the lights will shine through and where the battery will go through, I just have a 
one inch square die that I use for the battery portion and then the uh, area that the lights shine through, just whatever kind of a die or even just using your X-Acto knife and roughing out the uh, opening there. It's not hard to do. I tried using a rotary cutter and that did not work well at all. Um, scissors work too. You're more likely to have a little bit of a jagged edge on it. My preference is a metal straight edge and an X-Acto knife. So let's go ahead and get started on this and I will show you how I made this particular card. Let's have fun today. I just thought about one more thing that I really need to talk about on this, and this is the foam that I use. What I'm using today and have been using for the most part is six millimeter foam because that's what I have and I wasn't going to buy any new stuff. I had tried four millimeter foam and some thinner and it just was not quite thick enough. I had problems working with it. The 5mm foam is probably a better size. You wouldn't need to use some shims in it with the battery, but I show you how to work with it. If you have 5mm, go ahead and try it. Um, I'm not going to guarantee whether it will or won't work on that. What I am using is the 6mm foam. I'm not going to cover the design construction of a card front other than how it specifically applies to this light up process. For many of the cards I've made, I only do a stamped front with minimal layers to make the process of cutting the holes for the lights to shine through very simple. Having said that, however, I will tell you exactly what I did for this particular card. I started off with an A2 side fold card that's made out of Nina 110 pound solar white card stock. I then matted the front of it to, to totally cover it. The next part is the front card panel. It is four by five and a quarter finished. When I planned the layout of the card, you need to remember that you will have cutouts in the foam behind this for the lights to shine through here. And also I'm planning on putting the battery in its little cover down here. You need to plan that the cutouts are not going to be any closer than a quarter of an inch to the edge of that foam. All right. Next thing is the craft foam. I cut this one three and seven eighths by five and an eighth inches. The reason for that dimension is that I want to have the foam just slightly smaller than the card front because it seems like no matter how careful I am, there is always some little wow that is in the edge of it and I want to make sure that none of the foam shows around the edge of that front panel. The next piece of paper that you'll need is a piece of black or another dark dense cardstock. This one I cut three and three quarter inches by five inches. This is what the circuit is built on and it also keeps the light from spilling through to the inside of the card. Let me just show you what the difference is. This is the one that I've actually made that I will use ultimately in this card. You have your lights and the black. It does not show through. However, if you have it on white or another light card stock, you can see how it does show through. You want to eliminate that. And it's not as strong from the back side of the card to the inside of it, but you can still see the shadow of the light on the inside of the card. Having said that, what I'm going to do though to actually show you the building of the circuit is I will do it on white cardstock since you cannot see any of the lines that I'll draw on the black. And I'll show you a workaround if you need to use a lighter colored cardstock. 
Another piece of paper that you need is a cardstock that is one by two inches, and you fold it in half. This is what is the very sophisticated battery case that you will use on it. You also need a, another piece of black cardstock, and you will determine the size of yours once you figure out what size the holes are that you need to cut in the foam. This piece of cardstock will go on the back side of the front panel. Again, it is to keep the lights from shining through. If you don't have something there, it will just spill all over around it, and you'll have very specific points of light. However, with the black cardstock, it will only show through the holes that you punch in this. Now, these... Okay, you'll also need a piece of vellum that you will put behind the holes that you punch in here to diffuse the light. This is a very heavy-duty piece of vellum, and I only need to use one layer of it, but I've used lighter weight vellum, and I have ended up using up to four layers of a lighter weight vellum. It's a matter of personal preference. Depends on how diffuse you want to have the light that's shining through. Now, then you have these funny little pieces. These are based on the size of the opening for the battery. The size of that opening that has worked well for all of the cards that I've made using the battery that I use is a one inch square opening. Well, because the foam that I'm using is six millimeter foam and it is slightly too thick, but that's what I had, so I'm using it, um, I needed to have some shims to add to the top of the battery case here so that there was not such a hole that you had to push too hard in the um, card panel. And it depends on the thickness of your foam and the thickness of the shims that you're using. Um, I cut half a dozen of them. I will probably end up using three of them on here. I'll have to give that a try as I'm working on it. Okay, so let's just get started on this. The first thing that you will need to do is attach this piece of black to the back of your card front. And that, again, is to keep the light from spilling through the opening all over the area and just focus it on the openings that you're cutting in the um, in your card front. So, got that on there now. And the next thing is to actually punch the holes in the card front. I'm using a Japanese screw punch that I used from my bookbinding days. However, you can use just a regular hole punch, a long arm hole punch, anything that will give you long enough access to the points that you need to poke the holes through. Um, one time I also borrowed a decorative punch from a friend and had star shapes on it. Well, I am not trying to be too gentle with this. All right, and now that you have those openings in it, the next thing that you will do is put the foam behind it so that and this is just a temporary attachment because I don't want the foam to shift around. I want these yep, I need to finish punching that one hole through. There. 
this is to poke, to mark through where you're going to want to have the opening cut for that. And the foam is slippery. I've had it slide around when I've marked these, so I just temporarily attached that foam in. And using a tape gun or you know, one of the snail type adhesives that works well because they do not stick well enough to keep the foam attached. It pulls off quite easily. All right, now you can see that I have, that is where the openings are. That's where I will want to have the light shining through. You're also going to need to punch another hole in the foam. And one way of doing this is just to measure where on the card you want to have the center of the hole. However, since I put a little push me label on here, what I generally will do is position that little label where I want it and then move it aside and punch through marking the foam. So I know that these three are where the lights need to shine through, and this is the center of the battery case that I'm going to be putting on. Well, through the miracle of video, I have already cut these out. And what I've used is just a one inch square die. And it surprised the heck out of me, but the dies will cut through foam quite readily. You may have to work a little bit harder at popping those out, but you have that. Next thing is that you have the piece of paper in this case, I'm doing it on white so you can see it, but normally you would be doing it on the black. This is what you're going to build the circuit on. And again, just temporarily, I adhere this to the back of the foam, making sure that none of it is sticking out from the edge of the foam because you don't want it to be seen. I then take and draw around these openings. And I know then that this is where the lights will go and this is where the battery case will go. What I will do now also is just lightly position this over here so that I know approximately where in that that the lights are going to go and it's right about through the middle of that. I will now, before I lose it, attach the vellum to the back of this. And like I said, if you are using a lighter weight vellum, you may need to use more than one layer of it. But here you have that and you can audition how it looks. I think that's just fine for me. The part of building a circuit is quite easy. Since I just do not want to have the light shining through this, and I'm going to go ahead and use this for another similar card, what I'll do is put a piece of black cardstock over that area, and that will sufficiently cover the um, to keep the light from shining through. It just needs to be 
just bigger than what the opening is. And now this highly sophisticated battery case, the one inch by two inch paper that's folded in half, I will glue that in here. And now I need to plan my circuit. This is extremely simple. You have the battery. The battery has a positive and a negative side. Marked positive on one side and often unmarked on the other side. What I typically do just to maintain my habit of this is that I plan on the battery sitting in there with the positive side up. You now need to draw your line. Draw some pencil lines for the circuit. From the negative side on the underside, I will have it Coming up, straight lines are nice and simple, but a slightly curved line is not a problem either. That will be the negative part of the circuit. And the positive part. They are two separate lines. You want to have them close together where the lights will be positioned, but they cannot touch. So now what I will do is, I know that it needs to go from under that, over and around. I will just approximate how much I need to have here. And it is far better to overestimate the amount that you need than to underestimate it because I have found that um, adding on to the tape does not work well. That the copper tape is just a light enough weight conductor that even the adhesive on the back of the tape will interfere with it. Sometimes the lights won't work. Sometimes they'll flicker a little bit. Um, a couple of times I have not allowed enough and tried to repair my circuit and ultimately ended up just tearing the circuit off and starting over again. It's no big deal. This is certainly not rocket science and it's not enough of a not enough power in the battery that you're going to end up electrocuting yourself either. When you're laying the tape on the battery case, on the, what will be the inside of the top, you only want to cover about a third to a half of it. You don't want to go any further than that, otherwise it, the connection just stays on all the time. And until I have everything installed and I know that it's working properly, I don't burnish it down. I'm just lightly setting this in place. And when I come to a corner, I bend back away from the corner and then straight across. Keep in mind, you want the area in here close, but you do not want the copper tape to touch in there. So. 
And the reason it has to be close is because the lights that we're using on this are not very big, and one side of the light needs to touch one side of the circuit, and the other posts on the light need to touch the other circuit. Alright, now the next thing that I do in here, because you don't want the battery just floating around there loose, I use a one small piece of the red line tape and you don't want to have it too close to the circuit because you don't want it to raise it above that little tape. I at one point had thought, oh, you know, to keep it really secure I would put a piece of tape on one side of the circuit and a piece of tape on the other side of the circuit. That did not work. It just lifted the battery enough away from the tape that um, it wouldn't make contact regularly. Okay, now we're getting these handy dandy little lights out here. These are five millimeter square lights. They come in smaller sizes. I no longer have the manual dexterity to use the small ones like that. You can see on the back side of it, you have a set of three contacts on one side of it, a set of three contacts on the other side of it. And these are not reliably marked, whether it's a positive and negative. side of it. So I will just hold it down in place. I usually just use my finger and I can see through it, but you probably can't see through my fingers on this. All right, that one is right. If I had turned it the other way, it won't light up because the light does have a positive and a negative. So... Let's just double check this again. Oops, and I probably missed it. Okay, it does. The next part of this process is that I take a strip of packing tape. I lay it over the battery and firmly secure it to one side of it. Then holding it in place without sticking the tape down on the other side, I make sure that the light is lighting up. And it is, so then I secure that. I decided I wanted to have two lights behind these candle flames, so... Repeat the process with the next light. And I want to make sure that it's able to be in direct contact with the copper tape that the... Okay, so that one is the right... On there, the right direction. Again, another piece of tape. I was a little bit generous on that, so... that in half. And both of those lights are working well. So now I can burnish the tape down around it. One other thing that I had learned on this was that I had initially thought that a small dot of glue behind the lights in addition to the packing tape would help secure the lights in place. No, what it did was that it kept the lights up enough that 
the contact was not reliable and I ended up with flickering lights or sometimes lights that just completely would not light up. All right, now we have this. The next part of this process is to take your foam that you have cut the holes in and adhere it down to your little circuit board. The what I like to do is run tape around the edges of it. And another strip through the middle of it. Running tape over the copper tape is not a problem at all. Then I like to put some glue in here too. The tape holds it in place long enough and well enough for the glue to secure. Now, what you can do is lay this over, and on this one I'm having to push pretty hard in order to make contact with that. So what I'm going to do is start with my shims. I know that I will need at least two shims there. So I will put that there. You want to have enough shims behind it that you don't have to push to the point that you're deforming the front of the card. But you also do not want to have so many shims of thickness that it will be on all the time. And I think that I'm kind of running into that stage right now. Okay, nope. Ah, see, when it's laying flat, it makes contact all the time. So, that third shim was one too many. Part of it's done. Now again, I will run my tape through here, around the edge of it. of that. And I have the card front put together. Now, so people know what to do with it, that it's Next step is to 
attach it to the front of the card. And since there is so much bulk to this between all the card stock and the craft foam, I probably over tape it, but I just don't want it to come out. Now, you have a little happy birthday card. Let's turn the light off and get a little bit better look. So enjoy. This card has been a lot of fun to make and people really seem to enjoy getting them too. Thank you.